The views and opinions reflected in any of the stories narrated are solely those of the story contributor and are not necessarily that of the Nightmare Society. This podcast features adult content, so listener discretion is highly advised. And if you or anyone you know is struggling, help is available. Please see the resources in the show notes. Hello again, Nightmare Society, and welcome to another episode of True Horror Stories. Just a warning, our fourth story tonight mentions drugs and addiction. It may not be suitable for all listeners. Also, I'm going to try and remember to post a photo on Instagram of the being mentioned in our third story tonight. Now, get comfy and prepare yourself for another episode of The Nightmare Society. This is true, and while it was never exactly as terrifying, I guess, as some of these other stories, I do remember being really creeped out and never comfortable staying at the farmhouse. My boyfriend at the time owned a farm that had been in their family for hundreds of years. It was about 500 acres, almost all wooded, and they would sell logging rights to parts of the property. It was an amazing place to explore, full of trails, waterfalls, cliffs. There was supposedly cave paintings back in there, if you could get down to the 60-foot cliff. During our time together, we spent a lot of time exploring the woods and making trails, by foot and on four-wheeler. You would find a lot of weird stuff back there, but I never thought much of it. There were a lot of sinkholes on the property and people tossed trash into them, like refrigerators, and had done so forever. So if there was a large flood, sometimes she'd go back after and find appliances from the 50s that had been unearthed. But what stuck out to me, and scared me, were the shoes. They were never near the sinkholes down in the valley, always on the tops of the hills. They were never just in the woods. They were always just at the edge of our trails. They were never scattered. They were always placed precisely side by side, as though someone had slipped them off and continued on their way down the trail, barefoot. I always tried to tell myself that it was just someone else back there, some kids goofing off. He didn't live on the property, and sometimes the kids out there would go back and play in the woods. But I always knew it wasn't true. It wasn't that they were children's shoes found in pairs, sometimes groups of four that frightened me. And it wasn't just the flattened grass and footprints to and away. It was the age of the shoes. They were cracked leather, flapping soles, tangled laces, and a style not seen since the 1920s. I went to Joshua Tree, California, a few days ago, and stayed with my friends in an Airbnb. The house was a nice size and had to be accessed by an unpaved dirt road. The closest house to us was maybe a mile away. All houses in this area have private driveways, too. On one of our drives back from getting groceries, I had seen an animal run away from our headlights super fast, but I couldn't make it out. I assumed it was like a deer or something because of how big it was. But all I had seen in the desert were quails, no big animals. That night I had a dream that my friends and I were searching for something and we were taken to a basement full of things and there was a small house with a red door. We went inside but I don't remember what was there. This may or may not have anything to do with my experience but I read here that dreams do have correlation. One of the nights of our stay, we had a bonfire and did some stargazing. I had to use the restroom at one point, so I went inside and was gone for maybe five minutes. When my friend and I came back, my other two friends were not sitting by the fire. 
I just sat and waited a couple of minutes for them to come back, but ended up going inside to check for them, but they weren't there either. We go back out and start calling for them and get no response. Instead, we hear coughing noises close by the right side of the house where the pool was. We immediately knew it was our friend because they had been kind of reserved. Our first instinct was to try and find them help. At some points of the trip, we had gotten very concerned if they were sick or something, but they had ended up feeling a lot better. We begin to go looking for them by the pool, but we call again, and in response, we just hear the same exact cough, same pitch. It was the same cough maybe four or five times. We thought our friend was throwing up or maybe smoking. Usually when we shouted for them, they would answer immediately, except for this time there was just more coughing. The last time we called, they finally answered and started coming around from the opposite side of the house, and the sounds of them walking and talking came from the left side of the house just seconds after we heard the coughing on the right side, and they were completely oblivious to everything that was happening. They had no idea about the coughing, and didn't even hear us calling until they got closer to the house. As soon as I realized the coughing was a lure for us, it confirmed that something had been keeping an eye on us. And I know it doesn't sound that crazy, but I can't seem to describe how strong the feeling was that we were being pulled, lured, over into this area. My house is composed of two floors. The second one is only rooms. Three rooms. When you go upstairs, the last room on the right is room C. The second door by the right is room B. And room A on the left. If you sleep in room A, you can see the stairs and the door of room C. One day, my mom saw a man figure that looked at her and then went downstairs. She couldn't say anything at the moment. But then she realized it could be a boy that my sister or I sneaked in. She goes to our rooms. I was in room B and my sister was in room C, but we were sleeping. Later one day I was alone in the house. We had a dog and he started barking at room C. So I go in there, but I see nothing. It was in the daytime. Whatever this is doesn't seem to have a pattern. My brother moved to room C which was empty since my sister moved out. He moved there with his wife and baby for a few months. One day they were chatting in the living room downstairs and listened to the monitor of the baby. Just sound, no image. And one of the toys turned on. The kind of toys that move and the lights and sounds turn on. So they go upstairs and see that the baby is still sleeping and the toy is not even anywhere near the baby. Also to clarify, a lot of people... I have two brothers and one sister, I have been living there for a few weeks or months with their partners and kids. It's not a big house, but we have a lot of space. Until this moment, I haven't seen the thing. One day I was in the TV room, and if you sit there you can see the beginning of the stairs and part of the kitchen. It's a house that's very open with everything connected, no doors, so the first floor is a big room with few separations so I was watching TV and then I see someone coming down the stairs and going into the kitchen but I look and no one is there this is the first time I saw it with my own eyes at this time I had this boyfriend coming over he was helping me cook something I was in the TV room choosing something to watch and he says I saw you and I was not in the kitchen, so I go there and I asked what he was talking about. So he explained to me that he saw someone walking behind him, exactly in the path that I saw this thing walking. It's the same one every time. Later, a cousin of my sister-in-law was visiting the city, so she came over and refused to sleep in the house because she stated that she knew something was there. This all took place in a 10 year span between 2005 and 2015. But in 2020 to 2021, when COVID was in the strongest phase, my dad got sick. And by this time, 
Only my parents, myself, and my daughter lived at the house, since he was really sick and attached to oxygen. My mom and he slept in the TV room, and one night both of them saw this thing, this figure, walking the exact same path as before. This ghost spirit thing, whatever it is, has never hurt us, but it looks like the hat man, and is very shadow-like. I'm not sure what to think of it. So this one time I was hanging out with my buddy, Aaron. We went to smoke out by the lake. He takes a drag first and then I do. I try to pass it back to him, but he's just staring straight ahead and being like perfectly still. I say hey, and he turns his head towards me. His face is strange, like I can see his bones protruding, and his skin is dark, like gray, almost black. It's just weird as hell. I asked him if he was okay, and he starts shaking like he's having a seizure. The car door opens and he falls out. I get out of the car and walk around to his side. I reach out and touch him, and it's like he just woke up. He's like, what happened, where am I? Again, I try not to really think too much of it. So, a year passes, and Aaron is doing a lot of drugs, like crazy. He ends up overdosing, dies at the scene. First responders manage to resuscitate him. A few weeks later, after the overdose, Aaron calls and asks if he wants to hang out. I agree. So I go over to this guy's house, and he's acting weird right off the bat. Like, really weird. I finally say, hey, I know what happened, we live in a small town. If you need to talk, we can talk. He says, I do need to talk to you. There's a reason I asked you over. He proceeds to pull out a folded piece of paper. He says that on the day he died and was brought back, he found this letter in his pocket. It wasn't there before the OD, but it was there after. I unfold the paper. It's in a language I can't read. It looks like it's written in blood. He lets me take the letter with me. I don't know what to think of the letter, but this guy I work with, Mike... He's older than me and gives good advice. I decide I'm going to tell him about the letter. I've been thinking about how to tell the story for days before I go into work. I walk up to him. He says, I need to tell you something too. Like he knows somehow I've been planning this. I say, you go ahead because mine is crazy and you won't believe it anyway. And he proceeds to tell me this. About 20 years ago, my mother passed away. I was with her when it happened. When she died, an angel or whatever you want to call it, appeared before me and showed me things. Visions, I guess. But it showed me you. You were with someone who bears the name of your brother. My brother's name is Aaron. You were near a body of water. You were in a car. Your friend turned their head to you and it was the face of the devil. He falls out of the car. You go around the car. Your hand glows white light. You touch your friend and the devil and him leaves. But not permanently. I always said I thought I knew you from somewhere. Now I know. I didn't remember any of this for 20 years until this morning. I had told my pastor about the letter and the entire story afterwards. The incident at the lake. The overdose. The letter. The things Big Mike said. The pastor was alarmed at all of this and sends the letter away to be translated. The letter gets translated. The letter speaks of struggles between the light and dark. I and Aaron are named specifically in the letter. The pastor decides an exorcism for Aaron is necessary. Aaron apparently learns of the plan and skips out of state for months. Since this was a private affair handled by local clergy, basically when the dude skipped town it just all got dropped and forgotten. He ended up coming back to town later, and I'm still friends with him to this day. But we don't really hang out. I do still see him around, 
and consider him a friend though. I have no idea if he's still possessed, and somehow this situation doesn't feel over with. I never went back to church or anything after this. It made me question reality. How could someone start to tell me a story that I've never told anyone before? When I was a kid, sometime in the late 90s or early 2000s, I was laying in bed and saw moving lights coming from the window. Then suddenly a tall being was walking towards my bed. It had large eyes with an oval face, wore a dark hooded robe and was carrying what looked like a lantern. As it walked towards me, it looked directly at me and spoke a very strange language, like maybe multiple sounds layered on top of each other, kind of aggressive sounding and fast. Its face was reminiscent of E.T. from the movie. I felt pure terror and screamed hysterically. My mom heard my screaming and opened the door, switched on the light, and it was gone. She didn't see anything. I had to sleep in my parents' room for years after that. It felt different from a dream. It felt real. And I have no memory of anything like this ever happening again. To this day, my mom believes I saw something that night she's never seen me so hysterical. I was frightened to my absolute core. Maybe it was some type of nightmare or hallucination, as I was an easily frightened kid, and my dad did watch scary movies and shows around me. But it was very traumatic and felt 100% real. I just wanted to share my experience and see if anyone else had experienced anything similar, or had any explanations, like with the hooded robe or language or lantern or it disappearing as soon as the light turned on. Below the post, another user commented, I've been scouring this sub and others for months, trying to find someone with the same visitation. I knew it wasn't a dream. What the hell was it? In mine, I was watching TV with my family. There was a knock at the door. I asked if anyone was going to get it. They all seemed not to be able to hear me. I walked to the door and answered it. When I opened it, there was a being who was easily seven feet tall or taller. It was in a white robe with a hood or veil, so I couldn't make out its features, just its shape. It had long fingers. It was also holding a lantern. It lowered itself creepily by bending down through the door, then stood straight up. It started chanting in layered language that seemed like a mixture of speech and clicking maybe. It was like many sounds at once, but also a language. Your description was spot on. I fell on my butt even though I wanted to run away. I was overcome with fear. It held the lantern towards my face and kept moving it closer as it chanted. That's all I remember. It's the scariest memory I have, and I don't know what it is. This also happened in the late 90s, early 2000s for me as well. I was in Arizona at the time somewhere between the ages of 9 and 11. I cannot seriously believe someone else has seen them too. This happened in the summer of 2009. I was born and raised in the plains of Texas specifically in an area where black-eyed kids' sightings are prevalent. I had heard the stories, tales, legends, whatever you want to call them, since I was a young man, but never truly believed them. The black-eyed kids was mainly something I entertained as a joke, or something to get a rise out of people. This changed in the summer of 2009. It was a warm night in June. I was up late, around 2 a.m., as I typically liked to stay up late, especially in the summer since it would stay fairly warm even after the sun went down. I had just run up to the store to grab a big fountain drink and was returning to my house through the back door when I was approached by two children, a boy and a girl. I was very startled once I realized they were there since I wasn't expecting to encounter anyone in my backyard so late at night. The little boy asked, Jim? We come 
and we need to use the phone. We are lost. This is when I noticed the blackness of their eyes. Both of them had eyes so black. They were like dark pits. This is also when my heart sank. I couldn't believe I was actually seeing them, that they were there right in front of me. As I mentioned before, I had heard the legends of the black-eyed children most of my life, so there was no way I was going to let them in my house. I darted in the back door and locked it as quickly as I could. Once I was inside, I ran upstairs and flipped on the lights to try and see if they were still outside. Thankfully, by then, they were gone. I had so much adrenaline pumping by that point, though, I had grabbed a weapon and began searching the house and making sure all the doors and windows were locked. It took me hours to get to sleep that night, and it's an encounter that will stay with me for the rest of my life. These entities took the form of something most people view as innocent, weak, mild, and trying to trick unsuspecting people to do God knows what with or to them. I'm just glad my reflexes kicked in and I was able to live to tell the tale. This happened when I was 17 years old. When I was a teenager, I had been dating this guy, C, for a while. He was older and abusive, but I was young and stupid. Anyways, I was staying at his house, which was about an hour and a half away from my hometown, where I lived. I did something to make him angry, I can't remember what, but he ended up kicking me out of his house at 3 in the morning and didn't give me enough time to grab shoes or socks, so I was barefoot. I didn't have a car and didn't know anyone in this town. I also didn't have a phone at the time. I decide I'll walk to McDonald's about a mile away and call my dad to come pick me up. I didn't believe in anything paranormal and had a cocky, I'm tough, no one can mess with me mentality, so I wasn't worried about walking alone at night. I was mostly just hurt and pissed off. I get about two blocks away when I stepped on a big piece of glass and screwed my foot up. At this point, I'm bleeding, hurt, and tired. I decided I'll head back to C's and hopefully he's calmed down enough to let me back inside his house. This is when stuff got weird. I'm almost to his house, about four houses down the street, when I see them walking towards me in the middle of the road. There were two of them, one about the size of an eight-year-old, the other looked to be about the size of a small toddler. My first thought was, why the hell are these kids out this late? They have some crappy parents. That's when I felt it, an immense amount of fear built up in me, and I stepped behind a parked truck on the street. I don't know why, but I didn't want them to see me. From behind the truck, I watched them. They weren't moving normally. The best way I can describe it is they looked like they were walking with broken legs. Their gait was so weird and jerky. That's when I noticed their arms. They were moving them really weird. It was inhuman. They were twisting them around and moving them in the ways a normal person wouldn't be able to. I was sufficiently freaked out and they were still walking towards me, and I was scared. I wanted to run, but I couldn't. I just stood behind the truck and watched them. Then they stopped for what felt like forever. I could swear they were looking at me, but I can't know for sure. All I could see were their silhouettes, and then they just turned around and walked away. In their bizarre way around the street corner and disappeared from sight. At this point, I'm rationalizing and have convinced myself I just saw some kids being really freaking weird. I make my way to C's door and knock. He refuses to answer. Shoot. Okay, well, I'm not walking anywhere far with this foot, so I decide to go to the park across the street. It was a small neighborhood park right across the street from his house with a single swing set. I sit on the swings, building anger and trying to figure out what the heck to do. Am I going to have to sleep in this stupid park? And then I hear whistling. Okay, probably just C's weird neighbor. He was always up really late, smoking in his garage. 
So I figure he's trying to catch my attention because sometimes I hung out with his son and smoked. I walked over to his garage and it's dark inside. What? I knock, no answer. Okay, so it wasn't him. I hear the whistle again. This sounds like a human whistle, not a bird. I start looking around the whole neighborhood, looking for someone in their front yard or something. I walk around the sidewalk looking at houses. Nothing. Odd, but whatever. I go back to the swing set, and then I hear it right behind me. I didn't even freaking look back. I ran straight to C's house and started banging frantically on his door while crying. He answers the door this time and I frantically explain the whole ordeal. He grabs a bat and runs out the door. Apparently he went to go look for the kids or whoever was doing the whistling. He couldn't find anyone. Later that night we were both sitting on his floor, rolling cigarettes. When we both heard the laughter of multiple children. It sounded like it was coming from the window. He ran outside and of course nothing was there. I was crapping my pants though. We heard it again one more time that night and that was that. I didn't see them again and we broke up shortly after that. I don't really believe in the paranormal. But sometimes late at night I remember those kids and have trouble sleeping. The way they were moving was just not right, not natural. I don't know how any person could move like that. And the sense of primal fear I felt is something I will never, ever forget. <laughs> Thank you so much for listening. And until next time. Sweet. 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 Sweet.